Hi guys, welcome. Well, we're here again at Crescent Honda here in the south of England. And today we are testing the 2020 Honda CMX 500 Rebel. Stay tuned, I'll let you know what I think about it. So guys, welcome today, Mark here, to a review on the 2020 Honda CMX 500 Rebel, kindly loaned to me by the guys at Crescent Honda here in the south of England. So let's get these specifications out of the way, shall we? Uh, this is actually the SE version, which comes with added extras like the little uh, headlight cowl there, gaiters on the forks, stitched seat, and this comes in at 6199, 6199 pounds. And the base model comes in at 5799 pounds. This, this also has a Scorpion end exhaust on it, but uh, that's not standard in the uh, special edition package, but it does sound really nice. So using the same 471cc parallel twin as used in the other 500 Hondas, absolutely brilliant. Uh, loads of low down pull, A2 compatible. Uh, this has been um, tweaked slightly, uh, revised in the uh, engine mapping, the valve in the ignition timing, just to give it that little bit more bottom end power. So power wise, this has 45 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. 43 Newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. You've got a super low 690 millimeter seat height on this probably the lowest seat I've ever tried. I'll do, do you a little uh, cutscene in a minute of me sat on the bike. Coming in at 190 kilos wet weight. LED lights, LED indicators. Got a single Nissin disc on the front. Nissin calipers. Tires on this, 130 on the front, 150 on the rear on very dinky 16 inch wheels. Now a fuel tank on this, it's pretty small on these, only 11 litres, but these are amazingly economical, these bikes, doing up to 90 miles per gallon. Yeah, you've heard that right, 90 miles per gallon. Even, even when ridden hard, you should get about 70 to 80 to a gallon out of this. So um, gives you a range of up to about 200 miles, which I'm sure you'll agree is still pretty good. So we've got the assist and slipper clutch on these really really like clutch action more of that later it's, as I said it's very very low easy to manage perfect for new riders or if you're uh, of the shorter nature should we say you've got Showa preload adjustable shocks on the back there and non adjustable forks on the front all Euro 5 Compatible now for emissions and noise, so all good in that respect. Eight and a half thousand, sorry, eight thousand mile service intervals on these, so very cheap to run. I must admit, I do like it sort of custom cruiser bobber sort of style. And these come in black, blue with the blue tank, or grey. So the other one that springs to mind. Um, that's competitive to this is the Kawasaki's Vulcan 650. See my review, I'll put a link at the end. Obviously that's a bit more power but that can be restricted down to A2. So guys, what do you think of that? I think we should take her for a little spin in the uh, Hampshire countryside. So guys, welcome aboard Honda's CMX500 Rebel. Wow. 
So the first thing you notice on this bike is absolutely how low the seat is. 690 millimetres. Uh, my feet are absolutely flat to the floor with my knees bent and I'm five foot seven tall. So um, absolutely perfect if you're a, a new rider wanting to get your feet flat on the floor to be a, have, have lots of confidence. Um, absolutely first class. I don't think I've ever ridden a bike with such a low seat height. So as always, lovely easy Honda reliability for starting, one push away you go. Let's get out of this place. So I say this is loaned by uh, Crescent Honda. Uh, please feel free to take a trip down to see the guys there. Got a great range of bikes, free coffees and all that good stuff. Loads of bikes to demo. So this is the fourth incarnation in the Honda 500 family that I'm taking out. Uh, previous bikes I've done the CB500F, the X, the CBR and now we're on the, uh, the Rebel. And I've uh, been on this bike already for about half an hour and I love it. <laughs> so they've reworked the engine a little tiny bit um, to give it a little bit more bottom end pull at the expense of losing a tiny bit at the top end but to be honest you wouldn't notice it but when you open the throttle up it really goes really nice and that aftermarket Scorpion uh, end can they put on sounds really throaty so let's run through this bike in the usual way shall we talk about all the features so as I said, the riding position, seated position is very low, very easy to get your feet down. And the knees are, uh, basically the legs are forward and 90 degrees bent at the knees straight down. They're not right out forward like the Vulcan, Kawasaki is, but these are very sort of forward riding position with the legs, plenty of room. All good in that respect. <laughs> so the clutch action on this is super light it's got the assist and the slipper clutch non-adjustable clutch non-adjustable front brake but to be honest they're all set at a nice kind of average sort of distance so for my hands fine uh, I don't know if I mentioned guys but I'm five foot seven tall with a 30 inch side leg just to give you an idea of my fit on this bike. Uh, the handlebar position, very very nice and wide. Um, but it's kind of funny, they're, they're right forward. So you're, you feel when you first get on it that your arms are right out stretched. But once you get used to it, it's fine. And if anything, you can, you could rake these handlebars backwards towards you by um, just undoing the four bolts there. So we're just coming into a bit of traffic now. This will give us a, a chance to um, just feel its low speed handling, what the engine's like at low revs. So far it's very easy. The gear change is super slick, as all of the Hondas. Very easy to handle. I say if you're a new rider, just getting into bikes or more likely coming from a 125 sort of size, this would be, this would be super, it's super easy for you to sort of get on with it's not intimidating at all the engine power's nice got good brakes good handling do love that little burble that exhaust makes at low rpm so the uh the the, the dash or the clocks well, it's a singular, it's, a, it's all in one, so it's showing you your time, your gear position, speedo in miles an hour here, average miles per gallon at the moment is showing 80 miles per gallon, and your fuel gauge. So no, no rev counter on this, unfortunately, but it's kind of the sort of the flavour of the bike, should we say. That goes well off the bottom end there. So with all of these um, 
Honda 500 engines. It's not about revving them high. It's about kind of three to 6,000 low to mid range is where these motors um, excel at. It's where they're designed to be really. But I must say just sort of threading through all this traffic, it, it's, a, it's a joy. It feels very light. You'd never think it was 190 kilos. Back brake feels nice and strong. Okay guys, we'll uh, catch you in a bit when we go out into the countryside. So guys, welcome aboard the old CMX 500 Rebel. We're going out into the Hampshire countryside now. Got a nice little long bend now. So this, this bike has really good fun handling, very kind of lightweight, fun, chuckable. So far I'm really enjoying this, especially the exhaust sound, listen to this. <laughs> Great fun. Okay, so back, back to business. So we're in top gear now, six gear, 50 mile an hour. There's no rev counter, but it's very relaxing. I'd say we're turning over at about 4,000 RPM at the moment. And there's next to no vibes at all. You know, you could tell it's a twin, most definitely. Nice characterful sort of rumble down beneath me. But uh, no, nothing really to uh, complain of vibration wise. Uh, the other three, 500 Hondas do have a bit of vibration sort of a uh, 6,000 and above but we'll try that out in a minute but so far I've been on this bike now for about an hour I would say and the seat is very comfortable reasonably firm no sort of aches or pains yet it's just round these sort of like roundabouts you can just chuck it around it's great Feels like it's got quite a long wheelbase and quite a long rake on the front forks to give it that sort of lazy handling. Uh, throttle response, which uh, is a lot of a issue I know for people. I'm pleased to say this is not snatchy or jerky. So we're going to go off the throttle now, back onto the throttle, off the throttle, back on, very smooth and civilised. Um, I'm very picky about that. And I do pick up on bikes if they're sort of jerky at all like that. So this is absolutely fine. So on this bike, we've got no rider modes, no electronic suspension. It's all built to a price. But do you know what? On this sort of bike, it really doesn't matter. This bike is just about cruising around the countryside. Nice and relaxed. On a day like today. So we've got the sort of inverse LCD dash. A little bit tricky to see in the bright sunshine here, but I can still see everything clear enough. Gears, time, fuel, speedometer, all good. We'll just try the front brake now. Yeah, not bad, not brilliant. I mean, obviously bear in mind it is bedding in. We'll try it a bit later on. But obviously we've just got a single disc on the front but adequate ABS is standard here now in the UK but no, I've not really ridden a bike of this style before other than the uh, the Kawasaki Vulcan but this really is lovely second gear opening it up I say really lovely little light clutch gearbox is sweet as a nut okay let's um let's do the old 30 mile an hour check just to make sure there's no nasty surging in the fueling at low rpm that is absolutely perfect i thought maybe the uh, aftermarket can might have uh, given it a little bit of a, a fueling glitch but it hasn't so that's all nice So pulling away is lovely. Now you could definitely feel that extra 
um, sort of grunt from low RPM as opposed to the uh, other three. But no, it's plenty responsive enough, really good. So we're now showing a colossal 91 miles per gallon on this. I mean, I'd be riding it like a pussycat, um, not thrashing it really, doing about 50, 60, but it just shows you how incredibly economical these bikes are. If you want something to ride to work on, you could put some uh, leather saddlebags on the side of this if it's your sort of style. You know, a leather jacket with tassels, whatever. So even in top gear now, it's very strong, it's pulling very uh, keen. So we're going to go for the overtake now. Fifth gear, wide open throttle. Yeah, not bad at all. So the mirrors on this, obviously, you know, they're um, in keeping with the bike, that sort of cruiser sort of look. They're very clear, nice view for the, of the road behind. And I mean, the suspension's doing an, you know, a, a fine job of all these bumps, really. You know, it's a budget suspension setup, really. Twin shocks, non-adjustable front, but they feel, feel absolutely fine, really. So we're up to sort of 60 miles an hour now. Still no vibrations or anything nasty coming through the handlebars. Just taking it a bit steady because it's a bit wet. A little bit of wallow in the back end on the on the rear shocks, but you know it's to be expected on a bike of this style. So fourth gear now, wide open throttle, 50, 60, and it keeps going. Great stuff. So we've just gone down to fourth gear now to get these revs up a bit. Yeah, no, that's really good. Definitely smoother than the other three, I would say. Yep. There's a tiny bit of uh, vibrations coming through the bars and the pegs, but nothing, nothing nasty at all. So uh, all good in that respect. Fourth gear, winder open. Oh, listen to that engine purr. What an absolute hoot. Right, we'll try the brakes again. 60 bar an hour, full front brake. Slowing it right down to a stop. Nothing behind. Yep. No fade there of any issues at all. Back brake's got a nice little bite to it. So we just do that 30 mile an hour run again. No, that's lovely. Very smooth, very sweet. No, no hunting or surging in the fueling. Lots of power. Yeah, you absolutely do not need to rev this engine whatsoever. It's a very lazy, relaxing engine, this. 55, 60 miles an hour is just sort of nice, happy place to be on a bike like this. And I've never ridden a bike with such a small little fuel tank, but again, you know, my knees are nicely tucked in, no issues. these are very cheap to run these bikes they're not expensive new you could probably get one of these on a PCP for a hundred pound a month you've got that lovely 80 to 90 economy 8,000 mile service intervals on it Honda build quality and reliability you know it's all good other than just routine servicing these these won't give you any any problems at all for thousands of miles see how low we can take it in a highish gear so fourth gear now 
just under 30. That's nice. There's no snatching in the chain drive or anything like that. All good. I do love that little crackle and pop on the overrun. <laughs> Lovely. So all the switch gear guys, it's very, very tactile, nice and easy to find, all very clear. So even though this is a very low seat height and um, my legs are kind of right up in front of me, uh, no issues whatsoever with any sort of pain in my knees or hips or anything. Jeremy speaking, it's a very comfortable position. I think if it was my bike, I would just um, rake these handlebars back an inch or two. So it just feels like you're sort of reached forward, should we say. Ooh. Here we go, third gear, full throttle. Oh, you just gotta love that sound. So obviously as standard this is going to come just with the standard uh, OEM Honda exhaust. It won't be anywhere near as loud as this but I'm sure it will still sound quite fruity. Yeah it's amazing you know it, it, even though this bike hasn't relatively speaking now not got a lot of power 45 horsepower it's still so much fun to ride because you can use all of the power here in the UK. You know, you're not kind of throttling back like you would on a superbike. Just got to watch these wet roads. It's um, been very dry here in the UK for a few weeks and uh, they're pretty slippery. Yeah, that's really nice guys, very impressed with this. Would I buy this over the uh, Kawasaki Vulcan? Mm, tricky one really, because if, you, if you're if you going to get the A2 license, you'd have to restrict down the uh, the, the Vulcan, but then I suppose you, once you pass your test, you could de-restrict it and uh, away you go. I don't know, this feels a bit more it's got a bit more character to be honest, I like the styling of this a bit more and it's a few hundred pounds cheaper ok guys, so we're just coming on to the motorway now just to uh, try out the Rebels higher speed cruising maybe you want to take it on a touring trip we're just going to see how it fares around about the 70 miles an hour mark with wind blasts and uh, how relaxing is it and uh, what sort of vibrations we're getting and that sort of thing so we're uh, probably down to fifth gear now just peeling in so fifth gear opening up so far so very nice so in sixth gear now, opening up. So there's your 70 miles an hour. So there's quite a lot of wind blasts hitting me in the chest. Obviously no fairing, but it's it's just a constant blast. You can lean against it. It's not too bad. The vibrations, I would say, um, very, very minimal. Definitely less than the other three. So that's really good. So it's holding 70 very easily here. I'm guessing it's about 6,000 RPM. Obviously no, uh, no rev counter on this. 
just going to open it up a bit yeah it's still got plenty more go in it so I guess this has got a top speed of about 110 miles an hour something like that it feels very stable I mean today is quite windy it's about 20 mile an hour wind today there's no nasty uh, wobble or anything in it I think you could quite happily hold this sort of speed for a while before you got a bit tired with the wind blast but no no problems at all generally generally quite good so we just slow it down a tiny bit now sort of 65 ish that's a little bit nicer on this sort of bike there's just over 60 wide open throttle there's your 70 and it keeps on going so yeah it's pretty good in top gear we'll just uh, take it right down to 60 that's nicer yeah 60 really is a much happier place on a bike like this just throttle back enjoy enjoy the cruising on it really okay guys so high speed cruising on this not bad you know four out of five stars but it's happier at about the 60 mile an hour mark and vibration wise really good no no nasty annoying vibes on this one at all what as far as i can feel so guys i hope you enjoyed that little review on the uh, honda rebel i certainly did well they've had some rain out here we got ourselves a flood so we just have a little final thoughts guys and a little walk around see what she goes like into neutral as always dead easy little sound check lovely and the keys on the side which is uh, quite funky All right, guys, have a little walk around for you. So, yeah, these, these gaiters and that surround and the seat are the uh, special edition model. So, yeah, the ever-popular 471 parallel twin is used by Honda in lots of their bikes. Right, just see what she's like to push around should be quite easy because the weight's low yeah that's really really easy yeah no issues at all with that probably one of the lightest bikes I've tried for a while so guys there you go Honda CMX 500 Rebel what do you think of that one then have you got one uh, what are your thoughts on it uh, how's it going has it been reliable are you pleased with it or are you going to swap it in for something else please feel free to post your comments uh, they're always good to, re to read um, if you like this video and this bike please give me a thumbs up and uh, please uh, share and subscribe to my channel and i shall catch you all again in another week or two for probably another honda so this is mark signing off ride safe guys all the best bye bye